Hello. Hi. Sorry. Future me from the editing booth. Just wanted to say that this is part two of a two-part video series, so it's going to make a lot more sense if you watch the first part. Although, well, if you'd rather be Tommy Wami Wibbly Wobbly, you're totally welcome to do that. Watch this in reverse. Otherwise, the link to the very first episode, the first part of the series, is in the description below. Enjoy. Bye. that you can buy for Doctor Who. Hey guys, welcome to the Doctor Who Guide, helping you expand your knowledge, your collection, and your connection with other Doctor Who fans. Here on this channel, we post video guides, reviews, tips and tricks for expanding your collection. If you want to see more content like this, definitely subscribe. By the end of the Junkings in 1978, the engineering department had nothing whatsoever of Doctor Who, and the BBC Film Library held only 47 out of the 253 original 1960s episodes of Doctor Who. Only 47 episodes. Things were looking pretty bad. The BBC then hired Sue Malden to take on the project and to clean up the mess that had been made. She was in charge of figuring out just exactly what the BBC had, but this was tricky because they still wanted to reassure people that they had not been as careless as they had been. The film library was then turned into the film and video library, and thus it was in charge of taking care of both types of media, everything was in one place. So Sue Malden needed something specific to track down within this mess of BBC film program reels lying around. She chose Doctor Who not only because of its archival value, but because of its cultural presence. This led her on a hunt for any available episodes of Doctor Who. Sue eventually found out that the National Film and Television Archive held three Patrick Troughton stories that the BBC did not. She was able to get a hold of those copies and ask them where exactly they had gotten them. The National Film and Television Archive told Sue that they had a bought them from BBC Enterprises. Sue Malden, the head of recovering these Doctor Who episodes, didn't even know about the marketing branch of the BBC. It turned out that BBC Enterprises had a huge store of BBC programs that they had made copies from and sent out to broadcasters worldwide. So following the transfer of all the episodes that BBC Enterprises still had, the number of episodes held by the BBC went up to 101. That was quite an increase, but there were still 152 episodes to go. However, Sue now had a paper trail to follow, albeit a badly kept paper trail, but a paper trail nonetheless. This meant she could see what copies of Doctor Who episodes were made and exactly where in the world they were sent to. They were sent out to many broadcasting stations in 30 different countries. However, there was a problem with the process. Due to rights, the BBC required that any broadcasting station that received any of their products could only air these about two or three times before having to destroy the reel and sign a certificate of destruction. Either that or the broadcasting station was supposed to send the reels to the next broadcasting station. This system was called bicycling. And it was really the only hope left for finding any Doctor Who episodes. Through efforts made through official programs run by the BBC or by programs that were run by unofficial fans called Missing Episode Hunters who were just dedicated to going to these countries and chasing down every possible Doctor Who episode. It was also made known that there were these Doctor Who episodes that were missing and the hunt was on. There have been many rumors, many dead ends, many hoaxes, and many false trails that have been tracked down by BBC and fans alike. However, many episodes have been recovered, and in strange places. Rumored that some episodes were found in a Mormon church, to car boot sales, to basements, or to cupboards of houses that the BBC owned, many episodes were found in unlikely places, including broadcasting stations around the world. I'm going to need my notes for this. Two Doctor Who episodes were found in Australia, three in Cyprus, one in Dubai, four in Hong Kong, one in New Zealand, and 15 from Nigeria. I'm definitely going to look there again. Blue Peter even announced that anyone who found and returned a missing episode would receive a life-size Dalek. That was in 2006. And even though the marching of time does make it more and more likely that even if a film reel were recovered, it would be so degraded that we couldn't get anything out of it, episodes have still been found as recently as 2013. So what is your opinion? There are many rumors that the BBC in fact owns all their copies of the Doctor Who episodes and are merely waiting for the right time to release them. 
Some people are of the opinion that we will never find any more episodes again. I will always be hopeful that more episodes are out there waiting just to be found. But if you think that that's all that happened to the missing episodes, fans in the 60s who were watching the show made their own recordings. People ranging from a 14-year-old who hung a mic from a flower pot in front of his TV speakers. He's gotten us incredible recordings and have now been restored with linking narration. And if you want to find out where you can find the audio of these missing episodes, I've got videos linked in the description below. If you want to know more about the missing episodes, the bulk of the information in this episode was gleaned from uh, the missing episodes documentary, Doctor Who, The Lost Episodes by Sean Lay. I have a link to that in the description, along with the Wikipedia page for the Doctor Who missing episodes. It's just chock full of information. <laughs> But in order to understand that question more, we're going to have to read our lines.